Next-gen consoles support 4K, 120 FPS, HDR, VRR. Point is, that's a lot of damage. This here is a brand new capture card from Elgato. It's called the HD60X. And this capture card has been made specifically for next-gen consoles. We'll build a setup with this PS5, this budget streaming PC. There is a build video of this on the channel. Then the new Elgato capture card and the Chatlink Pro, which is crucial for console streaming and recording. I was able to borrow this PS5 from a friend for which I'm extremely grateful. However, I'm scared to death to damage it. Now we're going to discover everything together because as you can see, I haven't even opened it yet. I like to discover a new product together with the viewers. So in this box, there's three things. There's two cables here and then the capture card itself. And it's kind of the same size as the card it's replacing. This is the HD60S Plus. This one is the HD60X. And it's basically just an updated version. Now a big difference between these two is that on the old card, you had a few ports on the back here and then one HDMI on the front. And on the new card, all the HDMIs are on the back, which is perfect for putting it on your desk like this. And then there's one headphone jack on the front here. And that's perfect because your headphone needs to go to where you're sitting. So now instead of routing an HDMI from your console to your screen, you're connecting it to the back of the capture card to the HDMI in port. And I'm quickly gonna put a monitor here on the desk. So this is the monitor I'm going to use to game on with my console. So what's happening now is the console is outputting footage to this capture card. So then now I plug an HDMI in the capture card and then that into the PC. And then besides that, I will need another HDMI that also goes in the capture card, now in the HDMI out slot, and that goes in the monitor here. I have no idea how to turn on this PS5. <laughs> Maybe with the controller? Let's press the logo here. Ah, uh, there we go. Owned Pro is a free plugin for OBS Studio that will give your stream a professional look. With a single click, you can install one of the five fully animated and completely free overlay packs with a bunch of scenes already set up. They also let you easily import your Twitch alerts, your stream's chat and your labels. There's also a chatbot to set up with basic commands, moderation, timers and giveaways. There's a countdown timer and there is 30 minutes of free epidemic sound music to test it out. With a premium account, you get access to their whole library of over 400 fully animated graphic packs in any theme imaginable and if you decide to upgrade with my code tvn you can slice 50 percent of the price the longer you subscribe for the cheaper it gets and together with my code that's three months of having all these graphics for only five dollars per month the link will be on the screen and in my description so while the ps5 is booting up i'm gonna take the other monitor here this will be the monitor of our pc and as you can see now even though the playstation is connected to the screen it is turned we have no signal and the reason for that is that by default consoles block capture cards now i'm going to connect my screen directly to the playstation here and as you see right now we instantly get a screen so now to use this capture card we're gonna have to go to the settings then to system then on the left hdmi and then here hdcp we need to disable this now because we did this stuff like netflix etc won't work anymore because they don't want you to copy netflix shows etc with the capture card but now the ps5 will be sending footage to the capture card that goes through USB to the PC and then through HDMI to our screen. I'm gonna use this budget keyboard here. I'm gonna link everything I use in this video in the description. I'm not gonna go too in depth on the PC setup or the mouse and keyboard since that's gonna be different for everyone. If you wanna build a budget streaming PC, I built this one in a video. You can check it on the channel. Now I'm setting up Gran Turismo here and now they say we are in 4K and then HDR is turned on. And this is some pretty important information to go over in terms of the capture card. So the PS5 is going to the card now, right? But there's a difference between the resolution that can be sent to our screen where we game on and then to our PC which will then be imported in OBS. By the way, let's do that first. I'm gonna launch OBS Studio. So I'm going to add a video capture device and then as a device, I'm gonna choose Game Capture HD 60X. And as you see, this is the capture from the PS5. And so as I was saying, there is a difference between the quality you can record and then stream in, the quality that goes through USB to your PC and then the quality that goes to the screen where you game on. Now, according to the box and the info I got from Elgato, the best quality you can send to the screen where you're gaming on is 4K, 60 FPS, HDR, and then also VRR, which I'm gonna explain in a minute, but basically 4K, 60 HDR. Now for some games, the PS5 and probably for future games can handle 4K, 120 FPS. You cannot send 120 FPS in 4K to the screen. So gaming in that quality won't be possible while capturing. Now the best quality that can go to your PC to record or to stream is 4K 30 FPS. So that's pretty important to keep in mind. If you want 
want to stream in 60 fps you cannot stream in 4k you will have to stream in 1440p 60 fps or 1080p 60 fps now these were the most important frame rates and resolutions i'm gonna put some tables next to me you can pause the video and check all the qualities that are possible just know that pass through quality is the quality that passes through the card immediately to your screen to game on and then capture quality is the quality that goes to your pc to obs or to elgato's capture program now according to the documentation there should be no lag on the screen that you're gaming on but then one fourth of a second on obs but to be honest i feel very little lag in obs here while gaming so i could definitely connect this to a laptop for example and then just game in the obs preview especially if it is for streaming if you're just gaming to entertain other people now of course when you're playing something like an fps if you're playing fortnite on your console then you're probably not going to be able to do it in the preview here because 250 milliseconds of lag is going to be too much but for casual games definitely possible without an extra screen now i'm going to add a webcam a light a microphone in a second i just want to mention that if you're getting into streaming and you want to set up obs studio you want to start streaming you want to learn everything i have a skillshare course that i just launched i think i published it like four days ago it's a complete obs studio course and i'm going through the whole process of setting up a stream it works for consoles for pcs for everything so i'll put a link in the description to the obs studio course on skillshare now as a webcam for this setup i decided to go with the eMeet C960. This is a very budget webcam that I reviewed a while ago, but I think it goes perfectly together with a console streaming setup. Your game will probably be full screen on the stream and then your webcam will be here on the side, for example. And so the quality of it doesn't need to be top notch. I think this webcam costs around $20. I'm not really sure. I will add the link to the description. I'm just gonna plug it into the PC right now and then we can check it in OBS. So now in OBS Studio, I can add a new video capture device, one for the webcam this time. Now it isn't aimed towards me, but I was gonna reposition this monitor anyway. So this way the stream preview and all the control, etc., is right here in front of you. And then on the side you can game, the webcam is aimed towards you. Now the quality is also not as good as the previous tests I did with it. And I think the reason is because we don't have a light yet. I'm gonna use a light I've showcased a lot on this channel before. It is the Rolino LED panel. I think the price was around $50 and this is one of the best budget LED panels I've tested. Now this is a bit too high, so I'm gonna lower it a bit. And in case you were wondering, the stand here doesn't come with the light. I bought it separately. It's the Tarion desktop stand. And this thing is amazing. It just clamps to your desk. You can change the height by just loosening this or tightening it. So I'm gonna turn on this LED panel and I change the properties here to make this webcam look a lot better. So as you can see, I'm gonna go back to default. This is what the webcam looked before. So I think it's a pretty big difference. Now, obviously this webcam here is a very budget webcam. If you don't know which one to buy, I have a comparison. I will link it in the cards. I'm comparing a bunch of stuff that starts with this one at $20 and then ends with this one here at $600. So that video is definitely interesting if you're looking for a new webcam. So I'm gonna flip the webcam horizontal, then I'm gonna cut off the left side here, cut off a bit from the right, a bit from the top, and then make it smaller and put it here in the corner. Now the PlayStation went in rest modus, let's restart it. Then the Chatlink Pro, I mentioned this in the intro already, and this is extremely important when recording your console with a capture cord or when streaming. Now look at this, so right now my PlayStation PlayStation audio is coming in right here in OBS Studio, right? You see the source moving and the sound is just coming from this pause screen here in Gran Turismo. Now, if I would plug this headset here in my controller, which is what you would do while gaming on a console, then I can hear the audio in the headset now. But as you can see, the audio isn't arriving in OBS Studio anymore. And I've never used the chat link before, but apparently this completely solves the problem. So inside there seems to be a very long cable and then something like a controller in the middle. It says isolate later on or off the side of the controller here needs to go in the headset and then what we're left with is basically a splitter at the end now according to what i found online the microphone that's coming from the headset here is going to this side here that needs to be plugged into the controller which then goes to the console to be able to talk to your teammates in games so your headset mic will go to your game but apparently the other side which needs to be connected to your capture card doesn't contain your microphone so you will not be able to talk to your stream to obs with your mic from your headset so we will need to install a separate microphone to be able to talk to the stream i'm just gonna connect this correctly now so the main plug here that seems to continue from this side here that needs to go into your controller and then the side that splits off of it in that side you can connect your normal aux cable the cable i was using for my headset and then the other side of that cable needs to be plugged into the capture card so let's test this 
Uh, let's see, I can hear my game in my headset now. And as you can see, the game is also arriving in OBS Studio because we can see the bar moving here. So to recap, this microphone from the headset is going to my game. So if I'm playing Fortnite, I can talk to my teammates. However, the mic isn't going to OBS, but both the audio from my game plus the audio from my teammates talking to me, so everything I will be hearing right here, is going to OBS. So if you're playing Fortnite with friends, then you can hear Fortnite, you can also hear your friends, and the stream can also hear both Fortnite and your friends talking. So the only thing that's missing here is you being able to talk to the stream. Now I just bought a few microphones to be able to test them in a video, and I think the HyperX SoloCast would be a great mic to install in this setup. I just looked it up, it costs $55. So yeah, let's do a quick unboxing. This was gonna be for the next video for the mic comparison, but I think this is a great mic to use for this setup here. If you want to see the whole comparison video, I went to Amazon and I bought the five best rated USB microphones. I think it's going to be a really interesting video. So yeah, subscribe for that. And let's test this mic now. You can change the position of the mic like this. You can also tighten it here on the back. And then on the top, there is a mute button, which feels like it's a static one. If you want, you can also connect it to a microphone arm. There is a connector on the bottom. So I'm going to record a small sample here so I can let you hear what it sounds like. You need to speak into the microphone from the front and obviously like with any mic the closer it gets to your mouth the better it will sound the further you put it away from you the thinner your voice will sound so when you're playing like this put it as close to you as possible then aim this part to your mouth and then just game like this by the way this setup is awesome already we've got a webcam the light the mic here everything is working in OBS now there is a really really important thing we need to talk about for a minute and it's VRR now VRR stands for variable refresh rate and you will probably know it as FreeSync or G-Sync, all that stuff. Up until now, the PlayStation 5 didn't support it, but in a few days, there's an update coming that will make the PS5 support it, and the Xbox Series X already supports it, and basically what it does is it will eliminate screen tearing. So screen tearing is when you have these weird lines appearing in your game, and the scenario where that happens, for example, is when your console is putting out 60 FPS, and then your monitor is set to 60 Hz, but then your console is having trouble keeping up with the game, and it's only putting out 50 FPS instead of 60, now when there's no variable refresh rate going on, then the monitor will keep showing you 60 frames per second, but the console will only be sending 50 frames per second to the screen. So as a result, now and then the console will only have rendered part of a frame, and then the screen will already show that frame. So then as a simple example, this part of the screen here will be your current frame, but then this part here will already be your next frame. And as a result of that, you will see a weird line right here between the updated frame and then the previous frame, and that issue gets solved with VRR, variable refresh rate, because it means that the monitor will be adjusting the frames per second according to what your PlayStation or your PC is putting out. Now with all previous capture cards from Elgato that wasn't supported, so when there was a capture card between the PlayStation and your screen, then variable refresh rate wouldn't work. And by the way, previous consoles didn't support VRR, however computers did. But now that VRR is coming to the PlayStation, Elgato did add it to this capture card here. So as soon as the update is coming to the PS4, or if you're using an Xbox Series X because that already supports it and if your monitor supports a variable refresh rate then you will be enjoying a smooth gaming experience. Now that was a big explanation just to say that VRR is supported but hey that's what you're getting with this channel. If you like these types of explanations then definitely subscribe. If the algorithm knows you then this video will be really interesting for you so maybe you want to click it and yeah like the video if you enjoyed it place a comment, check out my OBS Studio course on Skillshare, and I hope I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day.